Sign up, you f***ing nerds. Who wants a shot at the champ? They bring the heat. Francis Ngannou is the hardest puncher in the history of fighting. They bring the knowledge. If you think this fight is going five rounds, you are out of your mind. They bring you the picks. The dog is getting it done in this one. We deliver every single week. We're bringing the heat, ladies and gentlemen. The money line. Don't miss it on the MMA Experts channel each week. Yo, man, it's the money line. We're about to break it down. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm back. I'm back from island time to AJ time. So, of course, we're a little bit late. <laughs> but we're here. But we're here. But we're here late night time. money line for the folks. Mm. Come on. We appreciate you staying up for us. And AJ's back. AJ, I like that broom closet you were hosting from uh, on, the, on the last one there. But yeah. nice see the set behind you again thanks dude. man I, somebody actually said that they they like that setup i'm like really i'm like all right well maybe i'll just go in my bathroom and make videos from now right on. Like you just that. had like a yeah. picture it was like a black and white cityscape yeah behind you yeah I, listen, they, they I like it the simple you know simple it was nice it was the best i could do bro let me tell you something the wi-fi outside of america specifically in the uh, caribbean Right. It's not as fast. That's why I wasn't doing live streams. And a big thing that I noticed too is that upload speed in America. I take that shit for granted. <laughs> it was up in 10 minutes. Holy shit. You're waiting at least an hour to get a video uploaded over there, man. The Wi-Fi don't move the same. Dang, I'm telling you guys, you got to get on that Elon Musk Starlink. No, what I'm do I look know? into it? I'm gonna look what into do it. I know? What do I know? My my internet sucks as real money line fans know. Finch's internet ain't it. So what do I know about Wi-Fi? Hey, we're glad you're back on your Wi-Fi. I don't know if it's midnight or whatever the fuck time it is in Florida, okay. but you made it, AJ. Let's talk some fist fights. I assume you got to watch the card. I haven't gone back and finished it, bro. No, no way. I looked at all the highlights, bro. I'm usually the busy guy. This time, AJ didn't. All right. Let me help you out, dude. All right. Arguably, worst decision of the year on our lock. Oh, I know this one. First was on our lock, right? Of course. Isaac Dolgarian comes out and whoops, ass in the first round. Could have been a 10-8. I understand 10-9. Comes out, pretty much dominates the second round. Got touched with some shots, but a lot of grappling control, submission attempts. Third round is gas. He's gassed by the end of the second. Third round's gassed, loses it loses the decision i i was me and the entire chat were beside ourselves yeah i heard it was a major robbery definitely one of them to go back for me and rewatch and and see from the outside looking in now i was disappointed i mean i was looking at the live results and i was checking in on the fight companion constantly but it just seems like for whatever reason they they had to give it to rodriguez it's like the people's underdog had to get the robbery decision this week <sighs> I don't know what it is. I know some of your folks here, they listen to AJ every week, so they're like, Vegas is rigged, you know? I, I know there's those folks, and you know that's not me. I do feel like there was some incompetence in judging that fight. They yeah. just judge damage so much that you really have to consider when you're when you're picking fights now because it's like you could score takedowns and get a lot of control time submission attempts. To me, that is you dominating the fight. But mm. apparently it's just you land a couple more good shots and you win the round. Apparently to some judges, that's the case anyway. That's really interesting. Let's bring up the Dono in chat over here. Our guy in the chat, in the house, Goldberg, with the uh, freakiest traps on the planet. Thank you for the six ninety nine Canadian. What's up, guys? Hope you're good, AJ. UFC fights not the same without your commentary. Let's make some money this weekend. Let's fucking go back at it. The boy is back. And I'm doing this week's best MMA bets tomorrow for those that want the full in-depth betting breakdown. I didn't do it today. I was traveling today, made it back, bro. I was, I was back late tonight. And now here I am on Moneyline right away. So uh, we're going to drop the lock, though. So you guys will get the lock tonight. Let's go. Yeah, let's make some big money this weekend. I know a couple of you guys got to make some money back. Goldberg, I hope you bet my fucking parlay because it hit folks gerald mearshart hit that rear naked strangle that was sick i mean it was kind of obvious but apparently you know you got plus money on the submission prop i hope some people hit that and then tiago moises easy finish in the prelims so a uh, nice little parlay and the parlays roll on for me so yeah. i got that going for me well moises i saw the leg kick stoppage i want to say 
what he proves is that UFC veteran experience is a major factor. I know Mitch Ramirez was looking jacked and he was a decent prospect, but like, bro, when you got 11 UFC fights, you've been in there with the likes of Islam Mahachev. It's a different level that you've been seeing as opposed to guys on a regional circuit. Yeah, I mean, you could say that again, you know, and we'll see some of that on this card. I mean, there's always the newcomers versus the vets, right? A couple of those matchups on this card, and it means a lot. You know, having a checkered UFC career, being somewhat of a gatekeeper, will still mean you're better than 90% of the athletes, you know, who are uh, hovering around outside of the UFC and these other organizations. The UFC caliber athletes, especially depending on the division, are very high level. You know, if you're an average 155 pounder in the UFC, you're pretty freaking good. Pretty freaking good. Fact, fact, fact. Finch, man, what's what's the next fight that we're going to bring up? Is the I Finch mean, man recap. shit. From, from, from the UFC card? Yeah. Quick glance, quick glance. Here we go. All right. Um, you know what? Marcin Tybora submitted Tai Tuvasa. That was pretty bad. I could skip it. Brian Battle versus Angelusa. There was an eye poke, and and you know, it was um it was rather unfortunate because it seemed like Angelusa was ready to fight after they read the no contest. Yeah, you know, An <laughs> Angelusa's, you know, freaking out. And I think Brian Battle had some choice words for him. That was too bad. You know, we all picked Brian Battle. It looked like he was controlling that fight. And uh, Angelusa did not take the full five minutes to recover. So a little sketchy on that one. You did see that. That that I looked at. That I looked at. Here's a crazy one. OSP beat Kennedy and Zechiku. Kennedy didn't do shit. He just sparred with OSP the whole time. OSP is like, I guess there's no consequences. I'll just go hit this guy. Ends up winning the decision. That one was bizarre, but OSP did deserve that decision at least. Yeah, that's crazy, right? I OSP know. turned back the clock, you can say. like He, he did it. He beat a, a decent guy in Zetrakul. For sure. I mean, and we want to give all the credit to OSP we can, but I got to say, Kennedy, what the dude? He did. He Talk about letting him off the hook. Yeah. I mean, he went in there like it was a sparring match. You know, when I was hosting the live, a couple of people were commenting that that is exactly it. It was sparring and he didn't really turn it on until midway through the third round. Kennedy, that's too late. You got to let your hands go more. You got to go find the legend legend. You got to go find the veteran and um, you got to go for it. You know, in, in a in a fist fight, especially when you're a, a KO striker, risks are part of the game. Kennedy didn't take one and in turn lost the decision. Yeah, that's. That's a shame because it looked like he was going to starch OSP. OSP world champ 2024? So, what do you think? Listen, I think that uh, him and Magomed Ankalaev should be next. That's my matchmaking. <laughs> What's up with Tai Tuivasa, though? You think his career is over? Too much damage? <sighs> no, I think he's selling beer and I think he's, you know. You know, not a great grappler and that Marcin Tybora probably, probably trained very extensively to take him down and submit him. I thought his takedown defense would be a little better than that. That's all. I think he'll be around in the heavyweight division. Okay. Okay. So we can agree now Derek Lewis, Jarzinho, Rosenstrike. Is what? That's what has to be next because it was supposed to be if Ty wins, Ty versus uh, Rosenstrike. Yeah. Yeah, you got that one on point. I mean, AJ, yeah. if you're better than anything at picking fights, it's matchmaking, brother. I think that's my my top talent. You know, when I was like maybe 13, I thought, man, I want to be a UFC matchmaker one right? day. You know? So I'm doing it here. I'm the street matchmaker. The 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 street beast made me you need to work for like felony fights. You ever seen that's them? Right. Yeah, you I saw felony fights. You could yeah. like put crackheads against each other. Yeah. There's a lot of those in LA. If you come by me, plenty of people will fight each other for a hundred dollars for AJ's sure. felony fights. Winner gets a hundred bucks. And I that's feel like it. the YouTube channel would blow up. It'd probably go crazy, but I might get arrested. Hey, I, I really appreciate the congratulations for getting that title fight. Yeah, Pantoja oh, is yeah. in trouble. And it's my first UFC headliner, first first I'm title sorry. fight for me. I actually, I did, I do have an amateur title, but this is my first professional title. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm excited for you, Steve. I'm excited. You know what's crazy, Finch? I was thinking about this, man. Jose Aldo, back in action. I guarantee you, it's because he saw what Marab did to Cejudo, and he said, "Bro, I was, I was not even getting damaged by him. I just got held against the cage." He's like, what am I doing on the sidelines when my only loss is to the number one contender as of recent and like Piotr Jan? I think although Jonathan Martinez is a fascinating fight because Martinez is this slick, dangerous kickboxer, right, in his prime. And then you have Aldo, legendary striker. 
I want to see how it matches up. I was thinking about the fight, though, how it's going to play out. The worry would be ring rust with Jose Aldo, but he has still been fighting. He's been doing boxing. So he has been getting rounds in. Granted, different sport, still combat experience. It's not like he's just been sitting on the sidelines waiting it out. And you're taking on Jonathan Martinez, who's definitely sharp as a blade right now. Damn, man. I want to pick Aldo, though. Martinez versus Aldo, to me, is speed versus power. I think that Martinez will be looser, quicker, better timing. But if you get hit by Jose Aldo, your ancestors are going to feel it. Jose turns his hips into every single shot. They have a different style of striking, different style of delivering strikes. So I believe Jose Aldo, if they're both in their primes, finishes Jonathan Martinez. Right now, it's an interesting one to look at. At, I'm sure we will. I'm excited. Listen, Beavis, my guy, if you're wondering, if anybody's wondering why I haven't been reacting to Conor McGregor or Jose Aldo or the Ian Gary situation, it's because I've been out of the United States of America. So I was out of town enjoying myself, just dropping the, uh, the prediction videos. But don't worry. Don't worry. The Heat will be back, per usual, in the next day or so. I'm back on the grind now. I saw what Colby was saying. You watched Colby's? Yeah. I saw Colby's. Yeah. I saw Colby's like outside. And the, I mean, the ending joke was funny. You know, he's yeah. like, and if we don't fight, I'll be getting the action. And you'll be sitting on the sidelines watching the action like you always do. Whatever he said, it was, was funny. Crazy. I mean, that Colby, was... it was a little cringe midway through. I almost shut it off, but I'm glad I made it to the end because that last joke actually got an audible laugh from me. Uh, Colby Covington, decent job on the mic, my friend. You know, Ian Gary did respond, though. He said he's got his own stipulations. I got to I gotta go sit down and watch it and analyze it, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. We'll, we'll wait for AJ's breakdown on the shit talk between Colby and his name is escaping me. The Ian Irish Gary. This guy Ian doesn't even Gary. remember Ian Gary's name. That shows Ian, Ian Gary's Gary. not a household name. He's I not in the Finch household right it now. Didn't even, it didn't even pop no. up. Holy, there's, there's, there's some room up here still. Um, Look, man. It'll be an interesting one if they make it, but that's not even a fight yet. But we need AJ's hype videos, of course. Yes. You want to talk about these fist fights? I do. I do. I'm very much in the mood to chop it up. We haven't done money line in over a week, so it's going to be nice getting right. back to the per usual discussion. We got UFC Vegas 89. We're going to break it down bottom to top. If you guys haven't, make sure you smash the likes. If you're new, subscribe. Your boy's back from vacation, so expect the daily content, the daily live streams, and the constant heat. First fight on this card is Mohamed Usman versus Mick Park. And we're in the small cage, which really enthuses me for the Mohamed Usman side because he is a very physically strong guy. And if he can tie up well with Park, and I'm going to say Usman imposes his will and takes a decision. I have not been very impressed with Mick Parkin, but it's not that he's looked horrible. I mean, he beat Jamal Pogues, who's a decent striker. It's the fact that I don't see substantial punching power, and I don't see much explosiveness from him. Usman on the other side is not a technical beast, right? But he's a physical beast. He does have a bit of punching power, brings decent forward pressure, Still raw talent, even though at this point, you know, he's a veteran of the game. Still raw talent really on both sides. Mm. I'm going to take a Mo Usman side. I'm going to say he gets it done. I'm going to say decision. I'm going with the dog. Man, it's a tough one. Look, Parkin's in this thing. I mean, are you guys going to bet on Mo Usman when he's got big gaping holes in his game? You know, Mick Parkin's in it. A part of me wants to pick Mick Parkin, but that little cage, that big motherfucker, I feel like, you know, they say every now and then, right, that athlete's a unit. Mo Usman is a unit. Unit. unit my man is have i seen him in person why do i feel like i've just been shocked by his size maybe it's just him standing next to kamaru i i every time i see him on camera then i'm like damn this guy is a freak so he has that advantage and um it could just end up being a ko just because he has that freak size and ability um parkins in this thing i could see parkin being a little more technical than mo uzman which isn't that hard to do but in that little cage it takes one shot let's go with the mo uzman ko Mo Usman money line. He is a dog at plus 126. Parkin sitting at minus 146. The KO line for Usman up at plus 400 with an Usman decision at plus 225. Mm. Mm. I have a hard time wanting to back Usman by knockout because of the Jake Collier decision last time out. 
the Tafa fight. Like he's still getting touched in fights a bit. <sighs> Listen, we're, we're going with the side of Mo on my front. He's a slight dog. Not not like the you know the greatest. Oh yeah, absolute. But I see a pathway. I see a small cage. And I see a big mother effer. Yeah, okay. that's true. Mo Usman is a is a big problem, but you know, as far as being reliable, he's not that, right? Hernandov with the membership for one month. He says, AJ, I thought Finch took over the channel. Listen, Hernandov, I'll take the mic from AJ. I'll tell you right now. I let him out of my basement. He was fine. He was down there. What video games were you playing? You were having a good time down there. AJ was good. Yeah, he Mortal clearly Kombat wasn't watching the card. What's that? Mortal Kombat and Mortal shit. Mortal yeah. Kombat's the shit. What's your favorite character? What, what, what is the? I like Baraka. Oh, bro, he spins with the knives. Yeah, yeah. that's my guy too. How are you gonna yeah. take my character? The Sorry. whole, no. the whole fucking docket, the whole, the whole roster. And AJ takes my guy, Baraka. Yeah, Baraka's the man. I use the spin moves with the knives, dude. That's my character. That's great. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Good to know, though. You know what's crazy? People in chat are saying AJ the AI. I promise you guys that it's really me. <laughs> That would have been a better storyline that I killed AJ and this is the AI version. We could have kept rolling with that for years. Uh, look, I gave <laughs> AJ his channel back, okay? He's back. Thank you, Hernandov. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, I'm excited. First fight going down should be fun. Let's keep running up this Vegas 89 card. Second fight on the card, we got Igor Severino slash Igor Da Silva versus Andre Lima. Listen, Mike Finch, I got inside information. You know who's Andre Lima's father? Andre Lima's father? You know who it is? No. You know who it is? No. Look at that face. You not see Anderson Silva? This is <laughs> the son. This is the... He's paid Get off. the listen. fuck out of Illegitimate here. son. Get Andre Lima. I'm telling you, bro. Listen, I think here. that Anderson Silva's son, Lima is going to beat a, a pretty good fighter on the come up at 20 years old in Severino. But how do I go against Silva? I'm telling you, it's like you've seen Ap Apollo Creed, right? Adonis Creed. They were calling right. him Adonis Johnson. That's Creed's blood. One day right. it's going to come out that uh, this Anderson Silva was having a little too much fun in the <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. That ain't Anderson Silva's son. But you're taking his bastard son. I'm picking the bastard, yeah. All right. Well, I think the bastard is going to take an L because he can't grapple. You know what I'm saying? You right. got two guys who could both kickbox. Yes, Liam is more technical. Yes, I could be eating my words. This shit could be Chris Lieben versus Anderson Silva, where Chris just comes out banging, slanging, and banging them things. And Anderson Silva just peep, 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 just sharp shoots where everything's landing, 100% landing, knee up the middle, jab, cross, right? Everything he's touching them with lands. That's possible because, uh, sir, uh, um, uh, Severino, although he is explosive and athletic and, and powerful, he is young and wild. Young and wild and free. <laughs> right, Snoop Dogg? Yeah. Bruno yeah. Mars, anybody? Um, yeah. So I'm thinking that the key here is to not kickbox with him. I think Severino is going to watch his kickboxing experience and go, okay, let's go to the place where I win half of my fights anyway and this guy can't work. On the ground, Severino submission. Severino submission. I like the call, Mike. I respect the call. Plus 155 for Finchman's underdog, Severino da Silva. For me on Anderson Silva's illegitimate son, Andre Lima, we got minus 180. Over one and a half and minus 175. You know what I'll tell you about this fight? I'm excited to sit and watch it. I'm excited to hopefully get the pick right. But am I going to go and bet? Two guys debuting off Contender Series. You know what? I'm playing it conservative after this vacation. Something's telling me not the answer. AJ is Lima's father. Shh. <laughs> Come on, man. I got to pin it off on Anderson. I can't pay that. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? AJ's flying around the world. He's doing fine. He's doing up up the donos for, for Uncle AJ. All right. Yeah, He's got some tough. checks to cut. You got checks to cut, man. Come on. Severino sub, dude. I Severino think it, subs cool. Let me read off the prop. Right? Out, but it, I, I, I don't see any proof that Lima could grapple, man. And he's young too. Sure. Yeah, he's twenty five. You're right. He's pretty young. Severino right now is by submission plus six fifty. Mike Finch, do you realize what you called? 
Plus 650 would be nice. Plus 650 is major. I still like Lima, though. I still like nope. Lima, bro. But I'll tell you something. Shoot the box guy, Lima? Igor Severino. He's with uh, Britu in the training room. Mm. If, if, if it's Lima, he dots him up, man. If it's Lima, it's because he's a more technical striker. He's got a path, too. All right, let's go. Good fight. I'm excited for it. Finch man going on the dog. I'm going Lima. We shall see when the fight takes place, what goes down. Next fight on the card. We got Montserrat Rendon versus Daria Zelenyakova. I'm picking Zelenyakova to win because she is a significantly better striker. Significantly. Yeah. It's about can Montserrat Rendon get the fight to the floor? That's where the worry lies because let's be honest. Zelenyakova took on Melissa Dixon last time, beat her up on the feet, got taken down, got destroyed from top. It's just Montserrat Rendon is also, right, mid-30s in her sophomore UFC ex appearance. Not a ton of experience. Bro, the striking, something that I was thinking is like, bro, she's throwing strikes from way out of range. Like, my target's here, and I'm going to throw a shot from over here. I'm never going to land. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck is going on? Like, I think she wastes punches in a sense. Like, there's no right. point to throw from that far out. So it's the horrible striking. And then I have to bank on, okay, could she land a takedown? She couldn't damage Tamaris Vidal at all from top position last time. And it's not like Montserrat Rendon has this insane resume of destroying absolute savages. I mean, she has six wins. All six of them are by decision. Fight before she got into the UFC was against a four and four Brittany Cloudy, and she won via split decision in 2021. She lost by submission in grappling at combat jujitsu against Juliana Miller, who's become a washout of the UFC. I don't believe in the grappling of Rendon. And I think Zelenia Kova has legitimate striking. Watching the stand up, the level difference is UFC level versus just simply not. But Zelenyakova's got issues on the ground, right? I mean, I aren't we worried about this little cage, her getting wrapped up? There's not a lot of room for her to move. If they were in the big cage, I'd probably be uh, on your side, but I'm a little concerned she ends up on her back. You know, I, I do... Um, I am not going to bet on Rendon, but I think okay. I'll pick her. I think she gets some key takedowns here, and that's important. Okay. Um, AJ brings up a good point. She throws shots from too far away. You know, you never want to make hardcore rules in, in martial arts, but a good one is if you don't think you're going to land it, don't throw it, you know? And, and of course, rules are meant to be broken, right? Like Leon Edwards knocked out Kamaru Usman by putting a cross down the pipe. He made Kamaru slip on the outside, and then he throws the head kick up. He probably didn't even want to land the cross. He's making Kamaru move to land the head kick. When I got to work out with Chuck Liddell, we taught a kickboxing class together. I said, Chuck, you paw that jab lead hook out there to make people walk into the right hand, right? He said, no. He said, I throw that jab hard. I throw that hook hard so they have to move, and then they eat the right hand. So mm -hmm. sometimes you do put a shot out there to set somebody up that's not what aj's talking about she's yeah. just out here with yes. some bust ass striking and yeah she could get dotted up but aj do i think she's getting knocked out probably not what? so i think she gets smacked up on the feet panics gets a hold of her and then ends up dominating on the ground so i'll pick rendon i'll pick the grappler and i'm against aj two to one wow wow let's see all right, this odds for this fight, they've gotten wide, man. Zelenia Kova is minus 210. Rendon plus 180. Was Zelenia Kova by KO plus 315 with decision at plus 165? I think Zelenia Kova does win. I'd love to see her knock out Rendon. I think it could happen, but it also is quite possible. You know, she touches her up three round decision, and Finchman's on the other side. And it's a ladies fight. And a lot of times these ladies fights do hit the over two and a half. That's already juiced out of the fucking mind. It's what? Oh, what? Minus 180? No, minus 280. Excuse me. Minus 280. Get the fuck out. Did we read Hernanov <laughs> off? Did we read him off? Thank you for the 199, Hernanov. What's up, clone? You don't even got a Zin in? <laughs> Bro, are you? That's untrue. Okay? Oh! Listen, Mike Finch, you know what I want as a sponsor for this show? Zin. Zin. Is anything is possible? Let's get Zin. <laughs> Let's go. Anything is possible when you believe. Thank you, Yoel. Thank you, Yoel. I'm glad. Yoel Zin's too, guys. So 
you Yo, want big traps. Clone army starts. You're right, man. That's hey, cool. that, that might have been what I was doing in the basement. Maybe I was cloning his ass. You guys, you guys think I'm I'm playing? I don't know. I feel like I feel like I want a little AJ clone army. You know, I see you guys post his picture all the time. I needed yeah. the real thing. So I reprogrammed him. Okay. And now we're good. So you're saying I'm located. Where am I right now? Am I in Cali? What did I do with the original AJ? Was it all a lie? Was I really not on a vacation? <laughs> was it really I was in the cloning process? That was all made up. What do you do with the original? So like in Star Wars, like there's the clone Boba Fett. What happened to the original? I don't know. I don't know. I got to figure these answers out. I don't yeah. know. Um, right now it's classified. Classified info. Listen, guys, classified. Let's keep running. Next fight on the card. Yeah, smash the fucking likes, bro. Main thing is smash the fucking likes. Give us some love. Give us a like. Do it. Subscribe, baby. Road to 30,000 subs has officially commenced now that I'm back from vacation slash cloning, depending on what side of the conspiracy you fall. We do oh. need a Mike Finch emoji. You're right. Oh. You're right. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to get I got that picked. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's keep running up. Next fight. On the card, Steven Nguyen versus Jarno Ernst. I'm going to go with Nguyen to get it done. Nguyen to win. I'm not super impressed with Ernst. I know he done well in like that European regional scene or national scene, whatever you want to call it. And he was like a highly touted guy coming into the UFC, took on William Gomez. And, like, he's hurt both of his UFC opponents. He landed, like, a nice uppercut on Gomis, or maybe it was an uppercut on Sung Woo Choi. I'm mixing the fights up. But he rocked both of them with clean shots. But he doesn't have a lot of head movement. That's a, a major flaw. And Steven Nguyen's stand-up is good. He's gotten a lot better. You dig back to his uh, Contender Series debut, which is a long time ago now. He ended up getting caught with a brutal jump knee by Elon Cruz in a pretty competitive fight altogether. But he's made good improvements since then. He's been on Contender Series twice following that. He did fight AJ Cunningham last time, and he destroyed him. Cunningham recently got destroyed by Ludovic Klein. Uh, so, um, I don't know. Uh what am I really trying to make as a point here? Ludovic Klein's pretty high level. And I know AJ Cunningham also got walked through in a UFC debut on top of a contender series fight. But what I'm getting at is, you know, he's still, uh, still an impressive win for no win. Either way, the way that he put the shots together, I don't think this fight with journal Aaron's is so easy though. I think journal Aaron's is a decent enough stand up fighter. I mean, he's from the Netherlands, bro. I'd expect him to be nastier on the feet than he is. I think Stephen Nguyen, in a competitive fight, can pull this one off against Aaron's. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, Stephen Nguyen coming off of the uh, victory, the finish over AJ Cunningham, he's more likely to finish this fight. You know, Jerno Aaron's is much more likely to pitter-patter his way to a decision, and we're seeing somebody on a trajectory up. And then, you know, uh, Aaron's coming off the loss to Wu Choi, um, maybe heading the other way. So I, I like Steve Nguyen here, too. I'm jumping back on AJ's team. Now we're now we're even with the picks, two to two. I do think Nguyen gets this one done, too. I Decision, think it's a good call. But I do think if anybody finishes this fight, it's Nguyen. He's got some pop in his hands. He's dangerous, for sure. Minus 185 for Nguyen, plus 160 for uh, Jerno Aaron's. No win to win by a knockout is up at plus five seven five. Shit, I think he does pull it off, betting it all on knockout at plus five seven five is intriguing. But the thing is, General Aaron's hasn't really shown any deficiencies in the durability, but he just lacks the head movement. Thirteen and five, and he's never been knocked out. So that's just something worth noting. I mean, he hasn't really shown a weak chin. No. And that's going to be important. But Aaron's, you know, again, just is he is he is he the type of guy that could shut the lights out? No. So I think Nguyen just being more dangerous is going to be able to get score more damage. And apparently, AJ, that's what these judges care about. Damage trumps all. I mean, it's true. They changed it recently. And people I mean, some cards, though, it's not damage trumps all. It's not a consistent scoring. That's Isn't the one that, that the do. problem? That Isn't is. that the issue? It's the issue because what the fuck? If I'm in Miami, damage trumps all, but in fucking, I don't know, Canada, 
takedowns get you a W. Like, I'm not saying it's accurate. They're GSP but... fans, bro. What are they supposed right. to do? I think we got to find a flow. I think it's there's got to be one judging system. It's like this guy would win in fucking Miami, but lose in Canada against the same guy. He just screwed <laughs> things up. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Ali Point VTV, thank you very much. The dynamic duo. It's the Iron Knee versus, but not versus, and because the same team, right? And but like the tag team man. champions, bro. Come on, dog. Boop. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate Let's go. that. Ali Point VTV, you're the man. Appreciate you tuning in every week, brother. Ali Let's Point go. V, that's a real OG. He's an OG. He's an OG of OGs. Let's keep running up. Next fight, we got Miles Johns versus Cody Gibson. If this fight was without a short notice fill-in, right? It'd be Miles pain. Johns all fucking day, right? Not even a fucking fight. Yeah. I was like, damn, this is a weird one. You know, Miles Johns tested positive for Torino ball, what John Jones was taking. I saw people <laughs> in my comments saying it was Adderall. No, it was not. It was Torino hey, ball. That was Adderall a picogram, steroids. dude. That was a picogram. Okay. Was a picogram. Yeah, it was a picogram. Yeah, yeah he uh, wasn't taking none. Uh, he was not taking none. I was making was a joke, taking. though. I was saying Miles Jones used to have a full head of hair. The fuck happened? <laughs> Those Pico grams. Now his fucking brain ate it all. Look at that no, shit. Look how big his fucking skull is. Holy shit. Mm. I'll be honest, man. Like I said, if we have a full camp, this is like not a thought for me. I think Miles Johns whoops Gibson. The worry is, does he fade late? But I was thinking, I was like, Miles Johns is not going to go throw his career away taking a fight that he doesn't see as winnable just to get a paycheck. Because I looked at like the, the fine that he got was not that much. Like it was thousands, but it wasn't like 20,000, 10,000. It was like 5,000 at the most for, for the uh, performance hands and drug pop. He's 13 and two. I mean, Miles Johns is, he's got a nice record. He's got a good game. He's dealing with a tall and long guy, but somebody that in the past has struggled with short, strong fighters that can grapple a bit, specifically wrestle. And I think Miles Johns can pull this one off against Gibson. So I'm going to ride with him. Damn. I'm worried he gasses, dude. Fair to worry. But, know, if, but if this fight's full camp, you're not even thinking about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm already gases though, and 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 you know Gibson's durable enough. I think I gotta lean Gibson due to full camp Gibson. But yeah, on on paper, Miles Johns should rip him up. Um, Gibson's a huge fighter for the division. He's way taller, way longer. Um, you know, I think the loss for the Ultimate Fighter finale definitely. He he looked better in that fight though. You know, he did he did improve. So um, we'll go Gibson, but I wouldn't bet on it. Um, interesting one, man. Me and AJ would have Johns if it was full camp, hard. So kind of hard to bet against him. But yeah, you're coming back off a of piss and hot. Like, are you are you going to be slower now? As we've seen from certain athletes, we won't name. Um, you know, a lot of X factors here. Oh, hey, funny. here's no X factor. What up, Grimy? Oh, no, it's because me and AJ are pulling up at the same that's time. Funny. We'll that's battle. Funny. Grimy, smash the fucking likes, people. I should have just said the F word. I've said it 20 times already. PG we can't have pitch. AJ making sober picks. Don't ever forget Pete Rodriguez. Well, I, for one, support sober AJ. He all does. right. So here's one for team sober AJ. Right there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. Sorry, I got distracted. I was just looking at the card. Thank you, Grimy. Am I not sober right now? I I could give some inside info out, but I won't. Should right. I give the inside info out? No, I shouldn't. No, no. this no no inside info. Man. No inside info for the folks. It's all on the low. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. I won't. All right, we're good. Odds we'll for the fight, okay? Minus 140 for Johns, plus 120 for Gibson. I will scream this. It would be minus 300 if it was a full camp. Over two and a half is minus 180. Fuck, man. Johns by decision, plus 180. Johns by KO, plus 300. Let me check something real quick. Cody Gibson, 19 and 9 is a pro, has never been knocked out before. He has been submitted. Miles Johns is not great with his submissions, but he do, you know, he do got two sub wins, seven wins by decision. Normally he's a guy that's proven to go later. I don't think Cody Gibson's knocking Miles Johns out. 
I think we're going over one and a half as an absolute minus 350. Over two and a half is minus 180. And I think Miles Johns is getting it done in the scorecards, bro. I do think he wins, but I understand the worry. And like we have to throw the caution out to the people is the fact that he's coming in on very short notice. This Miles is Johns dominates the first round, close second, loses the third. Isaac Delgar and Christian Rodriguez scoring repeat. style. Yeah, That's you know I what? Guess. Yeah, you might be right. This might be the same thing. This might be the Dolgari and Rodriguez rinse and repeat. So uh, maybe ignore my opinion on this fight. <laughs> you know what's best for you. <laughs> Good luck, oh, folks. Shit. Miles Johns on short notice. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Next fight on the card. We got Hikardo Hamosh versus Julian Arosa. I'm a Hikardo Hamosh fan, Mike Finch. Since the early times that I saw him, I always felt like I was looking at somebody with bright, bright potential, bright potential, a bright future. Okay. It looked like he had an ability to take it far. Now the Charles Jordan loss last time was shit because it's a fight IQ mistake. He's leaving his neck there. He's like pushing himself into the submission. And there's moments where I see Hamosh throwing stupid shots earlier in his career. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I remember the behind the lead leg side kick to the leg i don't even know what you call the strike i just remember seeing it and i'm like what is the purpose of this there's no right. damage being done from it it's just risking being out of position and getting caught but the talent is there and julian arosa is a guy does keep his hands pretty low is on a two fight losing streak has been knocked out <sighs> i'm a hamosh fan mike finch i really want hamosh to win I'm picking Ricardo Hamosh by knockout. I think there's times where he can look really good. And we've seen a lot of the time Julian Arosa fighting to the level of his opponents has a split decision win over Steven Peterson, but then, you know, finishes a Charles Jordan or beats a Hakeem Dawadu. Tough one for me to call. It's a good fight. Um, maybe a tough one to bet on. We'll go Ricardo Ramos. Look, I was first introduced to Ricardo Ramos by my friend, Manny Vazquez. Shout out to Manny Vazquez being booked to fight him with Dana White cage side. Manny Vazquez hit him with that rear naked strangle and was able to punch a ticket. So, um, you know, it was a big deal. And they were looking at Ricardo Ramos for the UFC at the time. Ricardo Ramos ends up, you know, regrouping, being able to jump back in there. And, uh, and 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 pick up a lot of victories and and obviously has shown he's a dangerous finisher you know how many submissions we got seven wins by submissions four wins by knockout total finisher and Julian Rosa has a few finishes himself so these guys will clash it's a really good fight give me a slight edge to Ricardo Ramos I do think that he has an ability to to get this fight done early. Um, with that being said, Julian Arosa is going to be a tough customer for him, man. I mean, 12 subs for Julian Arosa, never lost via submission. And Ricardo Ramos, pretty nasty on the ground. That helps, right? Um, the only way you beat uh, Julian Arosa usually is by knocking him out. And I think Ricardo Ramos is going to give him a run for his money there, too. So fucking good good fight i like it a lot definitely one that uh you know I, I'll, I'll be i'll be ready for to watch as a fan i don't know about as a better though give me ricardo ramos i guess tko ramos money line is minus 170 with the rosa at plus 145 the under is at minus 160 win by knockout for hamos plus 250 let's see how much is how many KOs? We got what four KOs, seven subs, five decisions to a Rosa on the other side, seven knockout losses, but never been subbed in four decisions. You know, and so how am I gonna pick Ramos by sub like the chat? Can't. Ramos by Can't. sub, Ramos by sub, dog. Like he's gonna be the first one, maybe, maybe, maybe. but you know, history does not point that direction. No. We're going to go with Ramos to get it done. Knockout is the official call. I like the pick, but like financially, if we had even odds, it's a different intrigue or if Ramos is an underdog, but he's minus 170, right? He's a fair, fair size favorite. And even though I am a fan of him, I recognize that he has a little dummy fight IQ right now, but he's still in his 20s. Okay. So it could change. I feel like Ramos. He gives me that Charles Oliveira vibe, the young Charles Oliveira, and look where he was able to go. So I think that Hamosh's future is bright. I still predict he's going to be ranked at some point. I think that he could 
you know, potentially make a run up. I don't guarantee a win here, though. I wouldn't bet the house on it, even though I think he's got a bright future because Eros is a guy that beats good opposition, man. He's got a good sub game. I mean, he subbed up Jordan, subbed up fucking Sean Woodson, guys that were supposed to beat him with relative ease, and then he pulls off big upsets. So Eros does shine in these spots as an, up, as an underdog. He's dangerous, man. Daniel Garcia, yo, Finch, if your lock doesn't hit, you down to shave a smiley face into your chest hair? Brother, first of all, I have enough chest hair for that. Secondly, hell no. All right. This is a prize possession, but thanks for asking. I appreciate you. That's funny, actually. Yeah, I don't blame nah, you. Nah, bro. I ain't going to do that. I'm not shaving my beard, so. There ain't a, there ain't a fucking dono you could drop that is going to make me shave. Million dollars. All right. I shave it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be dropping that. No, I know. I YouTube know. will be reviewing that one. It's like, what? You know fuck? what? I'm hoping we get some Bitcoin millionaires to start following the channel. Can you tell your Bitcoin millionaire friends to follow our channel, please? Please. Jeez. We gotta hit up these crypto guys, Mike Finch. Come on, man. This um, is what we need. Yeah. Chest hair stays, boys. Chest hair stays. Finch man on point. Let's keep running to the featured prelim. Is Trey Ogden or a hobo? Versus Kurt Holloway. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? AJ picks the pictures too. He did them dirty like that. Listen, he did himself dirty like that. That was the UFC's official pick for him. All right. That's on ESPN.com. That ain't me. I didn't make it. I think that Kurt Holloway is a very live underdog here. He's coming off of the Ultimate Fighter win and he's had a tremendous resurgence of his career. Trey Ogden on the other side. He has the weirdest win ever to me. Somehow this fucking guy beat Daniel Zell Huber. That's wild, right? But you know why it happened? Because Zell Huber is a young, developing fighter. Ogden has decent takedowns, and his striking is not bad. Not known for much power. Last time out was beating Nicholas Moda and was you know on his way to subbing him, but early stoppage by the ref. We got a no contest. Kurt Holloway on the other side has very dangerous grappling. He's been a fighter for so damn long now. I remember when he fought Pat Healy back in the day, bro. Holy shit. And he was the young kid back then. Look at him now. 37 making moves and a late resurgence. I'm going to have some faith in. I think Kurt Hollowell can keep it going. I think Trey Ogden's beatable. I think, I think Ogden is going to struggle with a guy that's very experienced, right, at a high level, but also that can push a pace on him. Ogden likes to fight at a very technical pace. And I think Hollabaugh can make him uncomfortable. So I'm going Hollabaugh by sub. Hollabaugh by sub. I'm doubling down with AJ. I'm impressed with the submission game, man. Does he look good or what? And yeah. especially on, um, you know, on the finale, man. He really actually did improve in the later stages of his career here. Um, you know, hey, you, you think Ogden looks homeless. I mean, what does Kurt Hollibaugh look like? My man looks like he crawled out of the fucking Dagestan caves and he's white. I don't even know why he's Dagestani. He's adopted. So, so something's up, man. There's something in the water. Uh, but he is definitely sharp with his chokes, his guillotines, his head and arms, his darces, you know, all of these different traps that he has. And if Trey Ogden wants to shoot on him, I think he gets his fucking neck wrapped up. And I like Kurt Hollibaugh a lot. And then I look at the odds. You're telling me he's dog money. Kurt Hollibaugh in a confident pick for me. Can we just absolutely feel the pain of pick him? I got two Bitcoins like eight years ago, but forgot my pass key. Bro, you have a hundred something thousand dollars, pick them. Just sitting there. That's oh up, my mo God. Mo moment of silence for pick them. We listen, my grandpa, when I graduated high school, okay, it was 2011. He told me right around my graduation, hey, there's this online money called Bitcoin. He's like, you know, yeah, it's like it's like a uh, money and you could buy it online. And then in the future, maybe it'll be money. will just go all online. And I was like, Grandpa, that sounds like a scam. You know, I just told him, hey, you know, be careful. It sounds like a and I don't know if he bought any or not, but he told me that back in 2011. Brother, it was like three dollars. OK, if I just spent 20 bucks on Bitcoin back then, like you'd be retired. I, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I did bad too, pick them. All right. Moment yeah. of silence for me too.
No, I remember when I discovered Bitcoin, it was like uh, during that movie, I think it was dope, something like that. It was like they were selling drugs and using Bitcoin. It's got to be back pre-2018, 2017. I don't know, before Bitcoin popped, you know, completely. It was nothing back then. I remember my dad said, why the fuck you didn't say anything about it? I was like, I don't know what this online. I didn't get it. I was like, what is Bitcoin? My God, it's how you buy drugs. And that's it. That's all I thought of it is you probably use it on uh, Silk Road. That's it. Bro, this is so ridiculous. I'm bringing it up. Hey, Finch, last week you said if Kenny and Zechko isn't in every parlay, then I don't know what gambling is. I did not say that. Is it crazy when somebody quote, did you say that, AJ? Finch, I didn't say it, but no, you, you remember I you did, did not say, say that. You did. What? When you took that rip on the stream, I saw it, man. You said it. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Finch man said it. They, people just make shit up. That is a made up quote. If it wasn't every, why wasn't it in my parlay? Did you listen to my parlay? Gerald Mearshart, Tiago Moises? I don't think That's so. <laughs> Nonsense, son. What the fuck are people talking about? Holy people shit. are out here framing, man. Listen, Jeez. Mike Finch, it's going to be a bloodbath, my friend. Internet's it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, I didn't say is. that shit. I know. I know. Harley McGlawn, glad to catch you guys live. New subscriber. Hey, big W. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. That Kennedy quote came from ESPN bet. That's really funny. <laughs> that ain't me, dog. Like, what mm. the fuck? What the heck That's are people talking though. about? He put quotes on that. That's crazy. You got misquoted, man. Welcome to uh welcome to journalism 101. To society. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Damn. All right, fair enough. Uh, we're on hollow ball heavy. Minus one fifty five Ogden, plus one thirty five hollow ball. Hollow ball to win via submission. Submission for hollow ball plus four hundred. I like hollow ball. Damn. Yeah. I think he wins, man. I think hollow has got a good thing going. Hollow ball sub. Hollow ball sub makes a lot of sense. Trey Ogden. Let's see how many sub losses he has. I think it's it's at least three. I want to say four, but let me double check. Let me double check. I want to check this out. Trey Ogden has three sub losses. Three sub losses. He's been choked a few times. What do we got? 11 sub wins. Yeah, he's, he's normally good on the ground, so he's confident there. But he's been locked up. Nick Brown from Bellator. And Kirk Thomas Kirk striking is looking good right now. He can scrap. Yeah, man. And, and it's not, bro, Ogden, he's not chinning him. Ogden's not heavy-handed. Shout out to our African brothers. Hey, shout out South Africa. Out. What up? What up? Do we got? Do we Africa, got? So is it is it out of Sanya or is it DDP? What do we got? Right out of Babylon. Sorry. Ogden, Ogden's getting choked. Ogden's getting strangled. John Donahue just just unfollowed Mike Finch on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the man. Shout out to John. Let's go. All right, listen. Let's keep running up the card. We got Hollow Bob by Sub as an underdog in this one. And let's jump to the main card. If you guys haven't yet and you're enjoying, make sure you smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Starting it off on the main card, we have a fun fight. Luis Poello versus Fernando Padilla. This I wrote down is my prediction for fight of the night. Let's see if it holds true. The way Poello fights is incredibly entertaining. He comes to scrap, man. There's no other way to put it. I've said that a lot in the past, but like this dude comes to brawl. Padilla on the other side, though, is a pretty good striker. Knocked out Julian Arosa. I know people are complaining. Bro, it was an early stoppage. Well, I picked him as an underdog and he won, so it was clean. It was clean. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the length of Padilla at 76 inches – compared to the 69 and a half inch reach for Poello is going to be a factor. I think from the outside, Padilla will be better. And Poello, he's so willing to mix it up. It's like, yes, he's overwhelmed a lot of people, but I'd be lying to you if I said, I don't think there's defensive flaws. You know, you walk down guys on the lower level scene and bully them. That same style is going to get you punched in the face, maybe kicked in the head a lot inside of the UFC. I think Padilla can hurt him here. I'm going to say we go long. I'm going to say we have a war. I think Padilla pulls it out on the scorecards. And, and you know what? Padilla has never been finished 
And and that's what we're seeing from the Peruvian, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Luis finishes everybody he fights. I think everybody. Okay, one decision. He finishes everybody he fights. So he's up against a guy who's durable. And Padilla's fought, you know, much more talent than him. Tough matchup. Cool one. They're going to bang on the feet. It'll be fun. Damn. I guess the UFC experience of Padilla, but that's a tough call for me, AJ. The odds for the fight have Padilla. At minus 164, Poello, plus 144. Over one and a half is minus 200. Padilla by decision up at plus 225. Bro, I like Padilla here. I really see him winning this fight. Poello's fun to watch. I know it's going to be a good scrap, but I like Padilla, man. I'm a fan. Ooh, I'm a mm. Padilla fan. Damn, the whole chat is against us, man. They're saying Padilla's trash. Just, just throw how's a couple. Trash? Tell here. me how he's trash. Um, Padilla's he's trash. Padilla's not that good. Oh. Dang! If, if you're losing to Nelson, okay, he did knock him out. That 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 part is important to point out. Um, yeah, it's a fight. I mean. You know, it, just on paper, well, we got eight and one, and then Padilla's record's not that good. 15 and five, you know, so win three, lose one. I mean, not that great. But the 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 talent level, beat Julian Rosa, beat Cameron Graves, beat Nate Richardson, lost to Spike Carlisle in 2019, not the greatest thing. Spike Carlisle did, get, did give A.J. McKee a bit of a run for his money in Bellator. I got to watch that one cage side. Spike uh, Carlisle's the man. But, um you know, Luis um, is probably going to strike with him, and that'll probably be um, a little more comfortable for Padilla. So I'll stick with it. But yeah, man, I'm I'm not betting on Padilla, folks. Facundo Covalan. Thank you for the 499 underdog round robin play for this card, gents. Thanks for the content, boys. If the dogs hit Saturday, AJ to perform a saxophone performance, my guy, <laughs> my guy. My guy, listen, bro. We're gonna give you uh, an absolute savage underdog lineup. I mean, I can drop something from over yeah, there. There are dogs on this card. There, there are dogs gonna be biting on this card, just like last card. There's always dogs that come to bite, and uh, I think though I got the ones with the heaviest chew. So let's fucking go. Holaba, very live as an underdog. Yeah, I think on. that's that, that one's got to jump off the page at you. Yeah, I think that's money. Facundo. My guy, thank, thank you for that, time. and we'll be back with the with the parlay picks. Okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Can we hit a hundred likes? Pick them. Listen, what are we at right now? I'll do a saxophone at seventy five. Okay, damn, that's really nice. Want. I'm a, listen. I'm coming off the vacay. You know what? Make it seventy because I was gone for a few days. I didn't do Holy my shit. daily live streams. Holy They're shit. coming back tomorrow. I'll be back on it. So that's that's what I do for the people. That's a man of the people right there. Intoxication fucking sells, you know? We talking odds, Finch? I mean, are you betting on this fight? Go ahead. You can tell the folks the odds. Minus 164 for Padilla, plus 144 Poello. Am I betting on this fight? Stay tuned. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all <Yeah. laughs> tune in the mother and greatest. Yeah, we'll... Uh... I'm going to swipe left. All right. All right. All right. All right. Swipe left. All right. Listen, let's keep running. Next fight on the card, we got Billy Corintillo versus Yusuf Zalal. <sighs> I'm picking Billy Q because Yusuf Zalal hasn't beaten any UFC level guys like as of recent. I mean, he just beat a debuting guy last fight. Yusuf Zalal has got a slick striking game. He went distance with a debuting Ilya Toporia. And you want to know something? This is a secret. I picked Yusuf Zalal over Ilya Toporia a few years back. So I was the real dunce of the fucking century. <laughs> out there. Holy shit. The times, they are changing. <laughs> the big time changing. I don't want to pick Billy Q, but it's like I'm having a hard time selling myself on Zalal stopping the takedowns. He's young, though, so improvements are going to be vast here. Billy Q is not an easy fight to come back to, though, right? Like, Billy Q beat Alexander Hernandez. Uh, last time out, took out Damon Jackson. He beat him. 
He's been in there with solid opposition, and his most recent loss is to Edson Barboza, a legit ranked killer. Like, Yusuf Zalal, he had a draw with Blackshear down at Bantamweight before getting released, and Blackshear's solid, right? Blackshear gave Batista a tough fight. I'm not trying to shit on Blackshear. He's good. It's just... I gotta go. I gotta go Billy Q. I gotta go Billy Q. I think Billy Q could win this thing. I think he could bully Zalal on the ground. I got Yusuf Zalal. I oh, believe shit. in Factory X. My guys, uh -huh. the Oscar brothers, told me about Yusuf. He's a good striker. And look, I think he could defend the takedowns. Edson Barbosa had no problem defending the takedowns. And we're talking about an aging featherweight. Yeah, I know he's the man. But we're talking about a, he was 37 at the time. Now he's 38. Like, come on, at featherweight, you can't, you can't be telling me that... Uh, Edson's like in his prime. I guess you could. You could make that argument. But um, that's an old featherweight to be getting fucked up, knocked out by. Um, Billy Q just seems to lose key fights, man. Fought my boy Shane Burgos. Shane Burgos smacked him up, gassed out a little bit in that one in the third round, but still smacked the shit out of him, took his back. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not impressed. I am not impressed by your performance. I know Yusuf Zalal went on a three fight skid in the UFC before, but I think he's going to be a little longer, use his legs well, defend the takedowns. Two out of three rounds, 29-28. Yusuf Zalal's my pick. Damn, bro. Damn. Okay. Respect. I respect the Yusuf Zalal side. I also respect Talmo for the 349. AJ is gonna head kick Hebas and Tafa. Winning first round. Rose is going to head kick Kivas. Mm. And Tafa winning the first round. I like your calls. Big W, Talmo. Fuck yeah. Talmo, that, that, is, that is logical. That checks out. Who's OSP going to get next from the UFC? Well, I really don't even know off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'd have to think about it. I don't have a matchup off the top of my head sitting here. Hmm. You like the underdog here, Finch. You know the odds are the odds are looking nice for your side. Uh really? Yusuf Zalal is plus one fifteen as a close money underdog. That's Billy that Q's bad. minus one thirty five, but you got me hyped, you know, bro. Why can I tell you something? The it's odds like opened at minus three hundred for Billy Q. Bro, I I just really? I just can't pick Zalal because what the fuck? He hasn't proven none to me at a high level, bro. Like, oh yeah, split with Sean Woodson. All right. I mean, yeah, Sean Woodson's a solid striker, but Billy Q in the small cage too, Mike Finch. He's going to be in his face, bro. He's going to no be way. in his face. Is Billy Q that dangerous? Let's check on this, man. Look at the the win over Alexander Hernandez. Eight well. knockouts is nice. Um, Billy Q can Alexander fight. Hernandez standing TKO is nice. That is nice. Same record, 13 and 5 as Yusuf Zalal. And Alexander Hernandez has been in there with a few, few good guys too. So yeah. that's legit. Um, All right. I don't know, man. I kind of, and I guess Shane Burgos was actually the last loss. So I'm like totally judging him off of those two fights. And he, dude, he gave, he gave Shane Burgos a run for his money. Shane gas dog. Shane was slapping the shit out of him. Don't talk, don't talk about my boy like that. Come on, bro. Shane, Listen. Shane was better. Shane was better. Listen, that's your boy. Shane that's lost the boy. third round because his legs were gassed out because you're squeezing the fuck out of him with that body triangle. Remember, he was dominating the fight. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. But Billy Q won that third round, baby. Okay. Let's go. All right. He can go long. What I'm saying is he's ready for a three hard, though. Damon Jackson's good. Win over him is important. No, I feel you guys. Hey, if you're going Billy Q, don't let me don't let me stop your train. Come on, man. The odds just keep getting better for Billy Q. Zalal's going to be the favorite by the end of the fucking week. Yusuf Zalal, he's 26% of Tapology's picks, but everybody's betting on him as an underdog. Yeah, I I uh I'm not like running to the box office though, you know. So stay tuned for the parlay and the lock, folks. Let's go. This won't be on it. Let's go. Finchman on the law. I am on Corintillo. Let's keep on running up. Next fight on the card. We have Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Siamon. Am I just blindly running into the ditch of the hype train? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he was, listen, bro, he was in the fucking hot tub with Henry Cejudo, bro. I'm assuming they're wrestling together. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do in hot tubs? You wrestle? I, I mean, me personally, but I don't know what they're doing. 
You wrestle in hot tubs, dog? Yes, I wrestled my girl in a hot tub a couple times. What the fuck? How do you win? Like, you can't pin somebody in a hot tub. They'll you, die. You can. You just got to let them get air at a certain point. I guess. Damn. Not everybody dies from getting strangled, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just hold her underwater? Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Careful, folks. Careful. Careful. <laughs> in the hot tub with AJ. Shit might go sideways. Um, this is the battle of the young guns, man. Talbot, bit of hype, as AJ said, coming hype. in on a roll. A little adversity in his last one, but looked good. And then Simon, man, great kickboxer. Really, really cool fight. I like this matchup. I like this matchup too, my Finch. I'm picking Talbot. I'm going for him. Are you picking Talbot? I'm going with Cameron Simon. I think he's going to land a lot on the legs of Talbot. If you can score kicks on Talbot's heavy stance and Talbot can't take you down, that's the pathway here. For me, it's about that takedown. If Talbot gets to the top position, I do believe Talbot could take the fight over. But we've been seeing fights scored more on the strikes, and I do think Cameron Simon outlands him 2-1. to one. Cameron Simon, a busier striker, a guy who uses all of his limbs better. I do think the kicks are going to add up. Give me Cameron Simon in a good fight between these two up-and-comers. And here's a prediction for you guys. This won't be the last time this fight gets made because it's a damn good matchup. Mike Finch, Mike the matchmaker. Mike Finch is predicting bright futures. We'll find out. We'll see. Yeah. I'm going Talbot. I'm going with the Sean O'Malley vibe, right? The hype train, long hair, good hands, good movement. Long hair. The long long, where hair. is long hair with good hands? Like, what is the is long hair more important than good hands? Less important than no, good. because Clay Guida is not known for his hands. He's got the long hair, so <laughs> think good hands. Clay is Guida, when one. he punches, you ever notice he keeps his wrist bent? Why is yeah. that? Would you say he's got because his striking? Is terrible. It's not, it's not no, it. his striking isn't even that bad. What's funny is like people who train with Clay. They're like, how is he good? And then he gets in the cage and the pace he puts on dudes, he beats people he shouldn't beat, you know? Yeah. Clay's one of those guys where in the gym, people can beat him. But in the cage, when you only got 15 minutes and Clay's going full energizer bunny mode on you, dude, his striking even can come together. Yeah. Yeah. Show-stopping donation from the man, the myth, the legend, John Smith. We appreciate you, John. John has nothing to say, but we'll say him for him. Salute, John. Thank you. Maybe that's the Bitcoin millionaire we were looking for. Maybe it's John, John Smith. Smith after all. John Smith. Are you a Bitcoin millionaire? Cash app Mike Finch MMA. All right. Venmo. Send me. Uh, I want Ethereum. Ethereum looks like it's doing well. Some Ethereum, please. Thank you. Buying five hundred ETH a month. Yeah. I'm not even Ethereum. lying to you. You should. Maybe maybe a little Solana, you know. That's nice. Let's Listen, get up. Go for the big. Oh no, man, I'm saving this money. Saving in what? I'm gonna buy a house. Well, what are you saving it though? You got the savings account. Yeah. But what about you invest a bit of it into uh, something? For something sure, like I do. I yeah. fuck around. Hey, at on Robinhood. Yeah, you like Robinhood. Kids. Robinhood. Uh, on Robinhood, I had 40 grand in cryptocurrency at one point. I was a complete Shit. degenerate. I was a complete degenerate. 40 grand oh, yeah. in cryptocurrency at one point. That point is not right now. Okay. Elon went on SNL and then that shit just went sideways. All what right. Did he say, Elon? Elon said, I don't know, it was some, some scripted joke. And then it just started, you know. I, I don't, I, all I know is that before Elon went on SNL, the the price of cryptocurrency was just astronomical mm -hmm. and and then it was just it started dying that night like that was the crash of the market you know and then you saw elon sold a lot of stuff and then the stock market crashed let's all be honest there was a moment there where elon musk was controlling the stock market and the cryptocurrency market my man elon's got power he is a living meme the dude is one of the richest men on the planet but you know what he is? He's a fucking savior of free speech in this fucking planet. <laughs> All right. We got to do something on the X platform. 
Do we should do X platform. We, we should, should, you know what? An X exclusive. What could we do on X guys? If you got ideas, always let us know. Finch, you have an idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Don Lemon got to interview Elon. Does Elon want to come on Moneyline? Can you imagine Elon talks MMA? <laughs> oh, we get a million views on that. Yo, Snow, oh man, I want to drive a Tesla, but you know, my, I should have sold the cryptocurrency when I was up. So no. I, I like I drove it. Have you drove the a few? Of them? Yes. So for my anniversary with my wife, yeah, um, two years ago, I rented a Tesla for the day. I think it was a Model S, um, and uh, it drove itself. So it was insane. Sick. Driving a Tesla feels like driving a cell phone. It That's is very crazy. bizarre when you do it. Very fast, and I just let the thing drive itself. I got on PCH Highway One here on the coast which is right there. I live right by the water. And I just put it on autopilot and that thing was driving itself. It was bizarre. Yeah, bro. My girl actually has a fucking Tesla when she's here and uh, I fucking whip it up and I fucking go from zero to 60 is like this. And it freaks me out because there's no sound. It just takes off. The next Roadster is supposed to go to zero to 60 in under a second. No shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy They're going to use SpaceX technology in the car. So if I could put something on my wish list, okay, it's the new Roadster. All right. Well, Finchman's getting that Roadster. We're getting him a Roadster. Give me the Roadster. John Smith, can you help me out with the Roadster next, please? Thank you. We got to check the odds on this fight. Peyton Talbot's the favorite, minus 140. Simon plus 120, the underdog. What do you think? I think Cameron Simon, dude, but it's a cool fight. Like this matchup is going to be a fun one. You know, there's a reason they fight, right? And this is one that's going to be fireworks. And I think Talbot's probably a little stronger, a little bit better at wrestling. Cameron Simon, a little sharper. I think the output's going to be higher. Like it's a fun one to watch for me. Um, I, I would understand touching Cameron Simon in this one because you're catching Talbot early, but AJ's on that hype train and it, it, it might, it might, you know, it might end up at the station. See, John Smith, he's helping you out. Forgot to type these words last stone. Oh, so here's another 20 to help Mr. Finch with the house. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm rooting for Talbot. I'm off those South Africans. They are dirty cheaters. Woo. Take two. Holy Thank you for the 20. Shit. Mr. John Smith. Damn, I appreciate that 20. Hey, man, you know, I appreciate the house dono. You know, I live in Southern California. Not the cheapest place to buy a house, but I do appreciate the second 20. Okay. That is very cool, John Smith. Um, rooting for Talbot, but I'm off those South Africans. Off the South Africans? Why are they dirty cheaters, AJ? Why? Well, yeah, I didn't say it. I, I mean, can know. you break that? You don't know why he's saying they're dirty cheaters? They're dirty cheaters. I don't know. John Big Smith. Big accusation, John. Big accusation. Why they um, Yeah, I could see rooting for Talbot. I mean, you know, the kids on the come up, he could be a hype train. Imagine if he comes out here and just ragdolls Cameron Simon. So, John, I see what you're saying. Listen, let's see. It's going to be a good fight either way. I'm excited for it. You know what I'm more excited about? The next fight on the card, which is our featured bout of the night. It's Edmund Shabazian versus AJ Dobson. I think Edmund Shabazian is going to come back looking like a menace to society. I think he's going to piece up Dobson. When Shabazian's on point, he's terrifying. And you know what? Before Mike Finch takes that deep breath again, because I see that deep breath. He's sitting at this <laughs> one. He's like, Ooh, don't be about? swayed by losses for Edmund Shabazian. Here's why. He's a 26-year-old, okay? He fought against Derek Brunson in 2020. Was he 22 years old at the time? You know what? You lose to an OG vet that holds the gate really well at that point. Not a bad loss. He loses a decision to Jack Hermanson. He loses to Nazaruddin Amavov. He beats Dolce Ali Gambula and then loses to Anthony Hernandez, but did damage in the first round. His four losses, three of those guys currently are ranked in the top 15. Derek Brunson was ranked before leaving the UFC and going with PFL, and he is coming off of a win. I think AJ Dobson's getting pieced up here. It's like, is Shabazian going to be extremely calculated? 
and technical and look to outpoint AJ Dobson and not maybe push the pace for a knockout because being a little more conservative and, uh, you know, risk management being at a high to like secure the win as opposed to throwing it all out there, maybe. But he does have the capability standing up to rock people. I think Shabazian gets a W. We saw another Armenian kickboxer, Armin Petrosian, beat AJ Dobson. I think that uh, Dobson's taking another L to another Armenian. Yeah, and, and you know, the chat's making some good points that, you know, that um, that Shabazian has fought much better competition. Dobson's very green. He's not as good as Edmund Shabazian, but I'm concerned about that power that Dobson's got. Dobson can just touch you with a big punch and put you out, man. He's got a lot of kinetic energy he develops when he throws, and sometimes he looks a little amateurish in there. But, uh, man, it takes one. So I think Edmund Shabazian will be up. I think he's a better fighter. Just concerned about the chin, man. Um, all right, I'll go with Edmund Shabazian. He's the better fighter. He should be able to really accumulate on Dobson. Shouldn't have a problem with the grappling. Shouldn't have a problem with opening up with the striking. He just needs to not get caught because Dobson puts one of those very straight right hands. And when I say straight, I mean he throws it like he's standing next to a wall. Like the way it comes off, like Dobson's like, it almost looks a little ridiculous the way he throws the right hand. He can put people out. So I believe in Dobson's power for sure. Powers may be underrated. Um, but Edmund Shabazian, I mean, we'll talk about the losses real quick, right? I mean, we got to look at it because the losses are the great guys. Derek Brunson, Jack Hermanson, Nasruddin Imavov, and Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Dog, they do not give him easy fights. AJ Dobson's losses are Jacob Malhum and Armin Petrosian. Those aren't bad L's either, but... Um, so, you know, cool matchup. I'll take Edmund Shabazian, but you know, we're going to roll the dice and make, make sure he doesn't get chinned. I want to take a rip real quick. Cause we just passed 70. Hey, Low key. and you know, what's crazy. I'm picking against another AJ. That's always dangerous for me. I make those mistakes. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Careful betting against AJ's man. It's bad vibes. Um, no, I think, uh, I think Edmund Shabazian's better and being better is great in a fist fight. You know, cage fights are one of those unique things where I can be up by 40 points in a football game, and if it's the end of the fourth quarter, you ain't coming back, you know? But in an MMA fight, you can be up by however much you want. And, you know, Chael Sonnen won the first round, the second round, the third round, the fourth round. But in the fifth round, Anderson Silva slapped on that triangle. You're never out of a fist fight, so it'll be fun until the end. Hype MMA is going to be here for two more months. Members Ooh. of all two months old, big ups to the hardest working man in the space. I guess that's you and Mike <laughs> for always being so enthusiastic and entertaining. Of course, AJ puts out so much content. We got to give him props. Thank you for calling me enthusiastic and entertaining. Hype, I got some news for you. I am going to put out some content here. I am interviewing Gabe Green on Saturday. We rescheduled. Gabe Green is going to be interviewed on Saturday at 10 a.m. at UFC Jim Rosemead. Um, I'll put out an interview with him before his next fight, AJ. Look for that content this coming week, folks. So we'll, we'll shout out Finch whenever it comes out. I'll drop a link for the man. Thank you. Let's go. Listen, Shabazian minus 210, the favorite. Dobson sitting around plus 180 is the dog. Interesting that the over is at plus 105. I can see Shabazian outpointing him. And them going long. Shabazian decision is plus two six five with a knockout up at plus one seven five. So a little worse. I'm confident in a Shabazian call. I like the money line side. Uh, you know, becomes a parlay piece in that minus two hundred territory. But I do feel very good about him winning. All right, John Smith is back. He hit us again. They are dirty cheaters because they poisoned our rugby team before the World Cup game. Whoa, and beat us. And Simon did a podcast about it, taking the piss out of us Kiwis for losing. They cheated. I'm off them. Okay, got you. See, I could tell you're not from the US because this taking the piss out of us. This is something I hear in like like England. This is like English. Well, no, then, he's uh, from World he's Cup. From Zealand. New, New Zealand, Zealand, of course. But like taking the piss out of them. You ever hear somebody say that for maybe New Zealand too? Maybe in Australia, taking the piss out of them. Who have I heard say that before? Why do I think English? Um, listen, I didn't know any of that shit. I don't watch the World Cup. AJ? What's the World Cup? Uh, the, uh, sorry, World Cup. I don't watch rugby, right? The World Cup game. That's what he said. 
I don't know what a World Cup is. No, I do know. I do soccer World Cup. The Stanley Cup, right? They yeah. play the hockey. They get the cup. No. Yeah. Listen, Mike Finch. Uh, Israel Adesanya is in chat. He just called you out. Yo, style bender. Come to New Zealand. We can do some hard sparring. Don't worry. I'll treat you like one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right all right first off style bender okay i wish this was actually style bender secondly come to ufc jim rosemead that's my home turf and we'll see what you got um are we done with john are they dirty Thank cheaters you. aj has he proven it to you i mean it sounds like it they're fucking they're poisoning them i mean that is ridiculous i'm anti-poisoning me too I think, you know, I think that's a good way to be. I think that, you know, it's better for society as a whole to not poison people. Count me against the poisoning, okay? I've performed Shakespeare, all right? I've seen my fair share of poisonings. Not good, all right? William Shakespeare. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, John. Very generous, John. I appreciate you. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, I want to talk more fights, Mike. We got more to talk about. I'm excited as shit, man. I feel like I haven't talked fights in years. I feel like I came back from a fucking temporary retirement. I'm like Jose Aldo back in this bitch. <laughs> Go on. Let's keep running up. Let's get to our co-main event of the evening. We have Carl Williams versus Justin Taffa. I'm going with Justin Taffa to chin him. Carl Williams is a guy that's going to spam takedowns, but... Chase Sherman was able to get his way back to the feet. And I think that Justin Taffa, if he is put on his back, can find ways up. But then when you look at them striking, there is a level difference. Williams is a machine for sure. He's a workhorse. But if he gets hit with a clean punch, I think that Justin Taffa is going to flatline him. I think Justin Taffa gets it done. We need some W's for these Samoans, man. Took an L last week, right? We saw Tuivasa lose. I think uh, Taffa turns it around. You know why? Because Williams doesn't offer the submission threat. So he's going to wrestle him for three rounds. Could happen, sure. It's a fist fight. But when they're striking, a guy with punching power like Taffa, deadly. And I'm going knockout for him. Especially since it's in the little cage, right? Man, yeah. this one's hard for me. Um, I really like that Williams is at ATT and Extreme Couture. Those are great choices for him for a big heavyweight to get the skills from those two gyms. Like he's putting himself in a great environment. Uh, Mike Brown and Eric Nixick, they could do a lot for this guy. Uh, clearly, he's got great training partners doing that. Um, you know, I think the takedowns are important here. It's going to be hard to rip Tafa's legs out from under him, but if he does, he'll dominate. You said he's going to work back up to his feet. I got to be on the other side of that. I think if Williams gets on top of him, he's going to park that house on top of him. Uh, you know, shout out to my guy, hashtag BJJ, uh, Mike, who took over as general manager of UFC, Jim Rosemead. We, we call it the Cadillac, right? Because when Mike gets on top of people in these jujitsu tournaments, my man parks 275 pounds of man on top of these these dudes he parks that cadillac on them they ain't moving so i think williams is gonna park that cadillac on top of taffa i'm against aj again i'm sorry folks but i got to go with williams i gotta think that he is going to be able to hit takedowns and avoid getting knocked out taffa by ko is his one pathway i don't see taffa winning a decision i definitely don't see him doing anything in the grappling department or kicking department he really is a one-trick pony he's got to hit him with a looping shot let's say williams gets through it aj Plus 155 Taffa, minus 180 Williams. Williams to win a decision is plus 185 with a Taffa KO at plus 200. I got Taffa, buddy. I got knockout. I think he's chinning him. Dog, Jared Vandera beat Taffa, okay? That's... What? Losing to Jared Vandera. That's not good. Fair. Fair. He's gotten better since then. Is that good? That's not good. It's not good. No, it's not good. It's not good. You're right. Fair. We'll Carl, see. Carl is definitely a decision maker, but decisions win. He's going to make a baby with Taffa from top. I think that's his goal. <laughs> uh, you know what? That would be one ugly ass baby. Those mm -hmm. two, that's just, that is not good. All right. Oh. And I don't care what these, uh, what these kids today mm -hmm. think. You can't do a baby with XYXY chromosomes. It just don't work. You got to 
XX and XY. So no baby, but I do see what you're saying. I think it could be kind of a boring decision. Hopefully Williams opens up with some elbows and shit, makes this shit exciting. I wouldn't mind seeing Tafa lay his ass out. That'd be fun. That's what I want, dude. That's what I want. I want Tafa to lay him out. You know, interesting what you just said. Today's society would say, no, Finch, they can they can make it happen. They don't need uh, X, Z, X, Y, whatever the fuck. It happens from all, you know? That's what they're saying. That's the science no, today. I'm Trust sure science. some lab shit's coming. It's coming, right? Some Come ugly on, babies, man. bro. You're going to see some ugly people in the next 50 years. <laughs> Fucking weird looking. Holy shit. Um, you know, my um, my operations manager at UFC, Jim Rosemead, her, her puppy just made inbred babies. You know, red babies. Banged the his the puppy banged his sister and then got her pregnant. It's like you know, so so. I mean, it, it's still X Y X E whatever X X. That's true, but you know, some eyes are gonna come out like this. Like, do you really want the inbred puppy? Who wants some Maybe. inbred puppies? Because if you do, I'll let her know. I'll ship them to you. The little Yorkie I mean, poodle. Are they four yet? Four legs? Or are they three or five? Uh, you know, it could be a mixed bag. It really, right. uh, it, it's a surprise. I'll take one with eight legs. Eight legs. Octo, you want an octo eight, puppy. You want, want a the spider octo dog. dog. Spider dog. Oh, we have to rate the physique. Rate the physique of Tafa. All right. So here's my thought process. If there's anybody that looks badass being fat as hell, is him. <laughs> the fucking tats make him look more aesthetic, bro. I'm giving him, giving him a five out of ten. He's got some muscle on him. He just needs to lose some body fat to really get, you know, that aesthetic physique. You know, um, I I see what you're saying. You know, some people wear fat bad. He wears fat well. He does wear the fat well. So yeah. given the how well he wears his fat, I'll double up with AJ. However, yeah. um, you know, not going to win the swimsuit competition. Not yet. Maybe maybe in the next couple of years, though, with no. this way the world's going. No. I'm telling you. The way the world's going, man. I mean, that's yeah. a swimsuit model, bro. He's, I, be he's, he's the plus model. size model. I, I, plus I, size. I, I, yeah. Um, he's doing modeling shoots in New Zealand and shit. Australia. Where did I? Here we go. Um, Finn show. Wait, AJ is alive. Yes, I didn't kill him, folks. All right. I was joking. <laughs> Unless this is a clone. I don't even know. The clone wouldn't know if he was a clone or not. Yeah, you know? Mean, yeah. Who knows what I'm cooking up down there? Who knows? All right. Who knows? Who knows? You got a time machine? I, I would I would love one. If you had a time machine, would you step in it? Bro, my plan would be simple, Mike Finch. I have one goal with a time machine. Go on. I'm going to go to the future. I'm going to get the almanac of all the UFC events, and I'm going to have the greatest fucking underdog bets ever. <laughs> I'll be rich. I'll be rich after one card. I'm doing a full card prop parlay. And that's it. And I'm going to be fucking driving a Bentley by next week. So <laughs> if you guys see me hit some crazy parlay, just know it's because the almanac. Fair enough. Although if there is a timeline, right? Uh, if there, if there is rather a time machine, it won't go in the future because if you could go to the future with a time machine, there'd be people from the past here right now, right? If they already are. Fair enough. We don't Maybe know. We don't know. Maybe that's know. what we think. It's aliens. Yeah. Really, it's just people time traveling. Like shit, they saw that. Yeah. No, we don't know. We don't know. We shall think find about out. It. Yeah. Let's go. Main event time. Main event time, and we're going to this time travel talk, man. Listen, I have a very bold prediction about the main event. Make sure you guys smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Mike Finch, the time machine is real. Okay. And your boys have access so. to it. I want, I want the time machine. I you have it. I got the DeLorean. You I won't, already you won't the meet here. Here's from the future. Hold up. Hold What's he robbing? The future right here. Here's what. This will be the look. This will be it right here. All right. This All is right, R2 Finch. Yes, it's R2D2, folks. <laughs> R2 Finch Dude. full card predictions, baby. Come on, dog. That's this sick. is this this is the real deal right here. Okay, I need to get the C3PO mask, this and that's my dude for Halloween. Hey, that'd be cool. I got a stormtrooper cool. helmet. Let's go. I'm full Listen, dork when it comes to Star Wars. I think it's sick. I <laughs> went to the future, and I know the winner of this fight already. I have the almanac, but I can't show you guys legally speaking. You know, just to save myself. It's Thug Rose back. 
I saw it already. The fight went down. What do you think I was doing for those few days, man? My 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 time travel got messed up, bro. That's where Is I that was. What's going on? That's what's going on. Rose Nami Yunus won this weekend, so bet the house. Okay. Yeah. Folks, I will never tell you to bet your house. All right. I'll Once you it. lose your house, be sure to mention in the court of law that AJ told you to bet your house. Um, I think that Rose Nami Yunus is a far better striker than Amanda Hebas. Is this the Amanda Hebas that we just saw get lit up by Macy Barber? Is this the same one? What are we talking about here, folks? I think that Rose Nami Yunus should dominate this fight. Rose looked decent against Manafro, and Manafro is way bigger than her. I think that Amanda Hebas is going to have a lot of trouble against Rose Namajunas. Very dynamic striker, way more shot selection, uh, just very on point. And 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 Amanda Hebas is going to be a sitting duck defensively. I like Amanda Hebas a lot. Um, very cool girl, cool girl. But we got to think that Thug Rose bounces back here. Um, you know, big spotlight for Amanda Hebas. Like cool that she got the fight. Thug Rose is smacking the shit out of her man. Thug Rose all day. Minus 205 for Thug Rose, plus 175 for He Boss. Thug Rose to get the win. You think she knocks her out? I could see it, man. Plus 110. I could see it, especially with her legs, right? It's like Amanda He Boss has that Muay Thai style where the mm. hips are forward. So you could see Thug Rose targeting that body, targeting the legs. And what happens when you start to target somebody's body and legs is their hands start to drop. They start doubling up their blocks, which leaves the head open. Rose Namajunas head kick knockout. Wow, that's ballsy. The head kick, KO. I think she could touch her with hands, too. Fuck he boss yeah. gets hit, man. Yeah. I like Doug Rose to win. I think she's live for the knockout. I think she's getting back on track here. A hundred percent, man. I, I, well, we can never say a hundred, but that's what I think. Um, and, uh, you know, Thug Rose never really lost it. She had a boring fight, you know, and then uh, followed that up with the Man and Faroe decision, which let's be honest. I mean, a Man and Faroe is one of the best in the world. And Thug Rose is a little undersized in that fight. Amanda Hebas, on the other hand, good grappler. But, you know, we, we've we've got her at 30 years old now. This is as good as Amanda Hebas is going to get. Amanda Hebas is 5'3". Am I even reading that right? Am I even reading that right? Amanda Hebas is not 5'3". What do you think she's taller? Yes. Really? If she's 5'3", she's really getting killed in this one because Rose is taller, longer, better striker. I'm sorry, man. If Macy Barber's slapping the shit out of you, Rose Namajunas is going to do a number. Rose Namajunas could definitely do a number on her. I think she's touching it up. Papa. Papa. Good hand movement, good speed. I think Doug Rose looks nasty, man. I think she looks very fucking nasty. So Thug Rose it is. How much of a favorite, though? Minus 210. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm thinking Thug Rose has got to be lock level. I think so, too. Because it's like, what is Hebas going to do? Is she going to strike with her? She's got to try to take her down, but it's not like Thug Rose is a shitty takedown defense. Exactly, man. Everybody's been trying to take Thug Rose down forever. Thug Rose has fought wrestlers like Carla Esparza who have tons of trouble trying to take her down. And, um, you know, at 115 pounds, Rose is the best. Rose is the best at 115? Well, this is at 25, I guess, so let's see. Filling the frames up. Okay, got you. Because the uh the Rose versus uh the Rose versus Man and Faroe fight. What weight was that at? Twenty five. Right. Okay. And then He Boss went down to fight Pinero at one fifteen, but fight before that and fight before that and fight before that was also at one twenty five. So uh He Boss not being a bigger one twenty five then because He Boss, I'm thinking one fifteen. If he boss being not a big 125er, it matters. It really matters because Rose is better. So Rose is better and bigger. Come on, man. Thug Rose. Thug Rose all day. Thug Rose for the win for me. Thug Rose for the win for the Finch, man. Mike, you ready for the locks? Let's do it. Let's jump right into it. The lock of the night. Money line lock of the night for UFC Vegas 89. Mike Finch, what are you cooking up? Come on, folks. 
This guy is the ugliest son of a bitch on the card, but he's got some nasty chokes. I like Kurt Hollibaugh. I think Kurt Hollibaugh is a problem. His strangle game is nice, and his hands are looking good, too. I think the Ultimate Fighter did something for him, man. That, that, that show really just put him into another gear. It seemed like he tightened everything up. I really believe in the strangle game. I feel like Ogden's going to shoot right into a choke, and if he doesn't, he probably gets cracked up on the feet. Give me Kurt Hollibaugh as an un. Underdog lock of the night. Can I let you go to the fire alone, Mike Finch, with this underdog? No. I'm going to join you. I'm going to go with Kurt Hollibaugh as an underdog lock with the Finch, man. We're going to go on the same Choo -choo. side. We, we disagreed on a decent amount this car, which I like, though. But then when we found this underdog, we both saw the fight. And yep. I think that we're going to see a win for Kurt Hollibaugh. Last week, we got robbed. Okay? I think justice will be served this week with a Kurt Hollibaugh victory. I like it. I Let's like go. it, dude. Yeah, Let's especially, go. and he's dog money. Oh, give me the fucking dog. Folks, we got to like it. It's like, what's Ogden going to do? Out wrestle him for three rounds? I feel like there's a big submission threat, and um, I feel like Kurt Holabaugh's game, man. He's just game right now. Kurt Holabaugh's game, and I think Ogden's beatable. So let's go. We're going Kurt Holabaugh as an underdog. The dual locks for us both but we're not done yet we got one more segment we got to talk about parlays all the competition that try to compete stand back watch the bomb drop parlay time open up your wallets and let's bet on some fist fights yeah yeah it's parlay time AJ's back in studio, and we gonna get this parlay right. Yeah. I know who I want to bet on now. And the parlay is Thug Rose. Come on, folks. Thug Rose has got to come through and get this dub. I feel like Thug Rose by Moneyline is a great parlay piece. She's got to be in whatever parlay you're throwing down. I actually did say that quote. That quote really just did happen. I do believe Thug Rose is a logical parlay and the other piece is the hard part right i'm gonna go with steve nguyen i do think he gets the dub here but i understand you guys swapping that one out there's a couple to throw in there a nice parlay honestly is the kurt hollibaugh and thug rose can i just can i just say like me betting that's probably it so i'll make the adjustment fuck it the official parlay is gonna be kurt hollibaugh because he's dog money and Thug Rose Nami Yunus. But I could see a, a new win parlay as well. And you guys can mix that one up. For sure, you got to throw Rose in the parlay, though. All right, let's go. I like it, Finch. I like it. Listen, for me, I'm going to keep Thug Rose on the lineup. But I am going to not be throwing down with Kurt Hollibaugh on this one. I'm going to go on the safer side of things. I really feel good about Edmund Shabazi and winning. And the fact that I can get plus 125 for Thug Rose and Edmund Shabazi in, I got to ride with those two. I see them both pulling it off. I love the chances. Boom. I mean, Shabazian picks nice. I'm worried about the chin, but Shabazian picks nice. Go Shabazian. for it, AJ. I was, I was looking at that one, too. I considered it. Let's go. Listen, I like where your head's at, Finch. You got some savage calls. We're back at it. We're back. The boys are back. The boys are back. The boys are back. Back in town. Come when are we going to get the singer, man? When, when are we doing the parlay time official music video? Bro, you just got back from vacation. I see that that saxophone you just played is affecting you. The whole chat is calling him out right now. Should we pull him up? What are you talking Holy about? Holy moly. They think you're fried, bro. They no, I don't feel Friday. Fried, I got up. Well, I got up early, bro, and I barely slept last night. <laughs> Pickham gives you the savage lock. I picked the lock first. Fuck you, Pickham. What <laughs> the heck? Uh, here, hold up, hold up. There's a couple more. My my guy AJ is cooked right now. There we go. There we go. Give him hell, folks. Um, so you know, have a fucking when we get back to it. When we get back to it, we're gonna do the parlay time song. I promise y'all. Parlay time, your man. It's the parlay. Throw the cash down and let's <laughs> really get the Jamaican rap. Can you imagine? Parlay? That'd be funny as fuck, bro. Oh my god. You know, I met a real Rastafarian when I was uh in the islands, bro. Nice guy. So you were in Jamaica. Just tell the folks. I wasn't in Jamaica. I wasn't in Jamaica. 
If you guys guess it, I'll say it. But if you don't guess it, I won't tell you exactly where I was. They ain't guessing it. I know they where AJ was. They ain't guessing Finch it. They ain't guessing it. That's they ain't a hard one. It. You couldn't guess. Come on, son. Listen, folks, I appreciate you guys hanging out. We did a long one today. A hundred. Oh, my God. I said a hundred. One hour and 34 minutes. I just said a hundred. Apparently, I'm tired, too. One hour and 35 minutes. I gl I'm glad you guys hung out with us. Good to see you, crazy mofos. We'll be back on Monday. So now you had to wait a little while, right? Now you don't have to wait so long. We'll be right back to it. Jump on the live with AJ. Make sure you're there. And we'll see you for every single money line when AJ and I break down the entire card, bottom to top. Five days away from the next money line. And listen, oh. you guys at home. I'm here every day again. I'm back. I'm doing the this week's best of my Maybets tomorrow. Live stream tomorrow night. Weigh-in show Friday with a live stream. Full car fight companion Saturday. Full fight night recap following it. And then UFC predictions for Atlantic City. So let's fucking go. Big W's all day. Big W's every day, my man. Is it O Block? No, nah, it wasn't the old block. Was it Cancun? No. They'll never guess. They got no idea. They have no idea. They'll you guys got know. no idea. Yeah, we'll see. He told me, and I don't even have any idea. You don't even know. Nobody will ever know. It's a special <laughs> place. I seriously can't even think. I'm like, where? No, it's all good. Um, Folks, we appreciate you. Have a good night. Be safe. Saxophone Island. Revenge got it at the last minute. Congratulations. That's it. Good call. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Peace out.